Okay. So um, welcome everybody to the Digital Literacy Workshop. This one's Google Apps for Education Teacher Showcase. And um, I'm leading the webinar in front of a bunch of administrators today. So hopefully the tech will all work well. I'm very excited. Um, we're also trying something new today. We are going to, you don't have to listen to me. You get to listen to um, three of our teachers who are doing some cool things with Google Apps for Education in their classroom. So before we get started, I have emailed the collaborative notes document to everybody. And um, you'll see, I'm going to jump in there for a second so you can see that. Uh, you've got your notes. There's a link to the reflection form. There's the link to where this webinar will be archived. Um, and then the notes from our presenters today are in there as well. And if you've got questions, you can add them there. Okay. And as you know, when we do a go-to meeting, um, I mute everyone because it's the sounds bad if we don't mute everybody. But if you have something that you need to say or a question you need to ask, you can ask in the chat window. Or and if you just say I need to say something, I can give you the the I can give you the um, I can change the presenter. That's probably not going to happen today since we're already changing the presenter three times. Okay, our learning target for this session is to learn how different teachers at different levels are beginning to leverage Google Apps for Education with their students. And these are our three wonderful teachers who we're going to be learning from today. So we've got Ashley Moe, fifth grade at Centennial, Greg Dowd, social studies at LaVenture, and Jason Susimio, always get the, at, at, at uh, Mount Vernon High School, so a math teacher at Mount, Mount Vernon High School. All right, and I'm going to just move on through here just real quickly and tell you that, again, remember to reflect on your learning at the end of the session, and you've got that link in your email, and then also to tell you that next week um, our, our web webinar is going to be on cool tricks to do with Google search. So I just uh, got back from a Google summit in Kamloops and I have lots of things to share, but this would be, I thought, a real fun thing to do next week. And so lots of different things that you can do right from Google search that you might not know about. Check stock prices, um, create a timer, all kinds of fun things. So um, that's next week. And now, we are going to jump to our first presenter, who's going to be Ashley Mo, and she's going to share how she's using Google Apps uh, with her fifth grade class. And I think what I do is I click here, and then I find Ashley. There she is. And I'm going to make Ashley the presenter. And Ashley Mo is a presenter, and there we go. Okay, Ashley, can you say something? So I can see if we can hear you. Do you need to unmute that? Is she muted? Oh, I guess Ashley's muted, so I need to unmute Ashley. Thank you. That would be awful. So where is she? Okay, Ashley, now Hello. try to... Hello! Hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay. <laughs> um... Okay, we've been messing around with a few different things in uh, fifth grade, and can I minimize this somehow? I want to get rid of this. Can I get rid of this? No, I can't, probably. Okay, so um, I don't know if you guys can see my little... We, we can't screen. see it. We can't see it, Ashley. Oh, wait, I can... Okay. Um, so anyway, so my... Um, we've done a couple of different things in fifth grade. Uh, Google Docs is obviously one of them. And then we've been integrating Google Docs with United Streaming a little bit. And so um, some of the cool things we really like with, with Google Docs is um, just the kids have been able to collaborate with each other. I've been able to go on there and um, make comments to the kids and they're writing. Uh, I've got a student's writing that's kind of that's pulled up here right now. And I was able to go on there and just ask her questions about the, the quotes and the dialogue being confusing. Um, and it highlights certain parts where um, where this is confusing. Um, I was able to ask her questions, and then she was actually able to reply to my question. 
and um, let me know that it's a dream and then that she spoiled it for me um, through these comments. And then there's, um, I was able to highlight stuff and give her an example of what quotes should look like instead of her bunching them all up inside the paragraph. So that's kind of one of the cool things that I can do with Google Docs. Um, another student here, uh, Edgar, he, I was able to make comments on his, but also comments that um, that other kids were able to make on on his paper. So Kimberly was able to say that was a good story, but then she was able to ask him to tell her that she liked when they talked about how something smelled that she needs to, he needs to add a little bit more detail. And then he can mark that as resolved. And this was actually kind of um, an interesting one I shared earlier that Edgar was able to go through and resolve all my comments and not change anything. And so I was able to pop them all back up and reopen them and let him know <laughs> They need to go back through and actually change something, not just say that he resolved it and he was done with it. So, um, so it's been quite a learning experience. But the kids are loving it. They love being able to see each other's papers and go in there and edit things. So that's one of the things that we're doing with Google Docs. Um, another thing that we've done is we've taken United Streaming, and uh, this is an assignment where they had to compare and contrast erosion and deposition. So they watched a video on erosion, and then they watched one on deposition, and they're like two, three-minute clips. And then they were able to go into a writing frame, which we set up in their, their Google Docs, and that looked like this. And then they were able to make a copy of it, save it in their drive, and then it ended up looking like this afterwards. So they were able to take one thing that erosion does, um, one thing that, or one thing erosion is, one thing deposition is, and then um, synthesize that, figure out how they're connected somehow. And so eventually we're hoping to get away from using these writing frames, but um, for at the beginning of the year, this is good for them to see the compare and contrast. So, yeah, so there's a few things that we're doing, um, and hopefully we'll be using some more, we've got some more writing frames that we'll be giving the students as well. So, yeah. So it's kind of a fifth grade. Thank you, Ashley. Do we yep. have one question? Does somebody have a question for Ashley? Anybody? Anybody? So, Ashley. Oh, okay, perfect. So, um, the, this this is this has definitely been interesting. So, um, because the students are are supposed to collaborate a lot more, this is definitely meant more computer time. And so, we have been very fortunate to where our lab. I, um, uh, Diane's time is open right before our specialist. And so fifth grade has been really lucky in the fact that we can go down to the lab and we've been using it for these kids to get more computer time to be able to go through and do some of these writing frames to work on their writing. And then they've just had to use the thin clients in the back. And it definitely takes a lot longer um, than if there was multiple computers. But that definitely is the drawback is they need the computer time more now to collaborate. Thank you, okay. Ashley. Mm -hmm. All right, and um, Kim, Kim uh, Betts had asked the question. She's on the webinar. Uh, when are students replying on the computer in the lab or on the iPads? So that's. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, that's that's. I was just <laughs> figuring that out. Okay. Thank you very okay. much, Ashley. That was incredible. I'm going to move over to Greg Dowd now. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> So Greg is the new presenter. Where did he go? And then I'm going to have to unmute and mute. So unmute mute Ashley and okay, Greg, you're on. Can you hear me? We can. All right. Well, um, like Ashley, one of the things I've done is some uh, documents in yeah. Google Docs. And Here's just an example of an eight-sentence paragraph I had students write. And what was nice about this was, uh, now these were not done collaboratively, um, but what's nice is when they're turned in, I can see uh, everyone who's done it because they're logging in with their uh, school district account. Even if they don't follow the file naming convention that we give them, I can still see everyone on the right-hand side that turns in a document. So I think that's pretty cool. 
uh, the collaborative one that I had them do was to create a cognitive content dictionary. And um, they had to make a table in Word, and then they had to um, go and divvy up which one of the vocab terms they were going to do, and then make the prediction and the uh, copy down the definition, and then find a picture and create a sentence. And like Ashley was, whoops, I just went black. Uh oh. Uh, let's see. You're not black here. Oh, oh. Now you are. Now you are. <laughs> anyway, that they were able to use the notes with each other to uh, figure out who was going to do what, and um, and all of that. So, You're back. yay. <laughs> um, this um, to go to the question before. Uh, I think it was from uh, Kim. Uh, students started this on the iPads, and then they uh, continued it in the computer lab uh, when someone else had the iPad cart uh, during their next class. So they got to the other. They got to see the other powerful thing about the Google Docs is that, um, unlike their personal folders on the district network drive, that they can get to it from any functional device that gets an internet connection. So uh, they were able to do these documents uh, both on um, handheld tablets and on the computers. The other thing I had them collaborate on was a sentence patterning chart, and I had them do that in a Google form. They created the Google form with places for the words, and then they would invite people um, to that form to drop in their adjectives, nouns, verbs, adverbs, and prepositional phrases. And then when they, when they submit, they get their results in a spreadsheet, and that spreadsheet lays out the sentences in order for them. So they come out right there. And then still using forms for my last thing is uh, I'm, uh, we worked on cause and effect, and I got inspired to uh, create a quiz with a form. And from what I've read, I can wait till they all take it and put in their responses. And then I use my response at the top as the key. And there's a formula I can put in at the bottom of each column, and it will autocorrect, and then I can assign it a value and have it summed in the column to the right. So not only can I give my quiz with the Google Docs, I can set it up so it corrects them all for me, and I just transfer them to the gradebook, which saves me a ton of time. All right. Does anybody That's it. Have, anybody have any questions for Greg? I'm really excited about the, the self-grading quizzes. I learned some more, more about that this weekend. I can't wait to share with everybody. Any questions for Greg? I also shared your cognitive dictionary and your, um, your what's this called? Your sentence patterning, patterning chart. It's oh, yeah. now been shared internationally. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, to Ashley's question, I will, uh, I'll show how to, how to grade these when I figure it out. Okay. Another webinar for another day. There you okay. go. Okay, well, thank you. And now we're going to move over to Jason at the high school or at home or wherever he happens to be right now. See if I can do this. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to lose him like I did. And then I'm going to do the audio. And almost there, Jason. Okay, right now I see a big black screen. Can we, are you there, Jason? Oh, I have, I did, I turned it over to him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Jason's a big black screen. Oh, do you, you can see a screen? Jason, are you with us? You're here, but we can't hear you. <laughs> it says you're still muted, but you're not. I'm going to mute you and unmute you. How about now? Try muting everyone and then unmute. Okay. Okay, how about oh, Hello? Yay! 
Yay! Okay. <laughs> we still oh, did. apparently I muted myself. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> That's what you can do okay. about the controls. So is my screen up? I don't see your screen. Oh, no. Other people are um, but Kim, Kim sees your screen, so I wonder if it's something I'm doing. Keep huh. it, just keep going, and I'll see if I can find your screen. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, the big thing that I'm working on here is accessibility. So, uh, in the Mount Vernon Math Department, we've got three teachers that are only half time, so they only come every other day, which makes collaboration a little tricky. Now, one of the cool things that we have now is the Google Drive, which gives us access to all of our resources online. So what we've done here is gone ahead and just loaded up all of our resources um, onto the Google Drive. So with Google Apps for Education, each of us has been given 30 gigabytes to store all of our materials, and uh, with every single worksheet that the math department has made, we managed to fill up 1.62 gigabytes. So we still got plenty. There we go. Um, <clears throat> now one of the things about this is people are pretty familiar with how to use the website, but it's a little bit of a pain every time you make something to log on and tell it to upload and it really slows you down. But if you notice over here, uh, there was a little spot that says connect drive to your desktop and that allows you to download Google's desktop app, which I have down here in the corner. So if I open this up, we can see that this um, folder right here, it works just like a normal Windows folder, but if you notice the little check marks right there, that shows that stuff has been uploaded to uh, the cloud. So what I can actually do, I've got our worksheet program right here. This is Infinite Algebra. I can make this worksheet that I'm going to use with my classroom tomorrow. And when I click Save, I actually have an option to save it into the Google Drive. So I can just go ahead and put it into my teaching files, Algebra 1, Unit 3. I'm just going to save it right there. And then if I look over here on my teaching files, let's see where it was, Linear Models, 1026. That's right there, and you can see there's a check mark on it. So even in that short amount of time it took me to find it, it uploaded it to the cloud. So when I come back to my classroom tomorrow morning, that file has already been downloaded to my laptop in my classroom. So that makes things a lot easier. Um, so anything that we do, if we have a meeting and we want to talk about switching around a test or uh, whatever we have there, these are all of our shared resources. Mr. Race likes to upload stuff, and we all use each other's resources. <coughs> um, one of the other things that's good is I went ahead and used Google Sites at sites.google.com, and let me find it. Okay, here's Ames, and I left a little note here for my students that if they need some makeup work, they can go to this website. And this was a really quick website that I threw together. You can see it's not very pretty, very utilitarian. Um, but my Algebra 1 extended class, if they're missing some assignments, they can just click here. And it's a link to my Google Drive. And they can see all of their work right here, uh, printed up in PDF form so they can access it right there from home or from their phones or for their iPads, whatever. This is in PDF, so it can be read on anything. Uh, one of the other cool things that we've been able to do is, let me back out of this a little bit. Ah, I'm going to go all the way back. Okay, so um, if any of you guys know Laura Sedano, she is a patient at Seattle Children's Hospital right now uh, going through chemotherapy. So she's trying to keep up with her work while she's going through chemotherapy. She's able to access this website and do some studying with a tutor at the hospital who then gives her quizzes. And then after she takes her quiz, I'm able to grade them. Oops, this was not a graded one. I'm able to grade them and, ooh, never mind. There it is. 
So I'm able to give her some feedback and tell her what she did wrong. So instead of seeing just some numbers in the grade book, she can actually see some of my feedback so that way when she goes to take the test, she can do better, just like as if she was in the classroom. Um, one last thing. Let me find my site again. <clears throat> as I showed you earlier, uh, students are able to access all of my files through this website, but someone introduced me to another website called Murally that allows me to organize things a little bit differently. So right now for my Algebra 1 students, this is what my unit on linear models looks like. And I can just zoom in a little bit there and they can see, okay, on day one, we went over basics. There's a YouTube tutorial on uh, how to graph points a YouTube tutorial on how to write an equation given a situation and then they can click right here and it's going to load. Oh, come on computer. All right, well, that's going slow, but I could always click open in a new tab and that's still going to load. Wow. Ever notice how everything works until you want to show yeah. somebody? Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> well, that should. Oh, there, there we go. go. So after a little while, uh, their work comes up, and they can see their work right there, right next to the tutorials that they know go with this assignment. Uh, so this is a neat way of organizing. Now, we started working on slope intercept form, and if you notice over here in the toolbar, I've got the Google Drive symbol on the documents, and I can just click on that. It's going to let me log in. I'm going to log in with my school email account. Accept that. And it's going to load some more. And you can see that now it's got all of my Google Drive files right here. So I can dig through here, go to Linear Models, and let's see, tomorrow we're going to do this one. So I can just drag that on right there. And it shows up as the assignment that they're going to do. And then, depending on how we're feeling, we can put some lines on here. Maybe, uh, maybe some stickers. Because <laughs> we love algebra. <laughs> Okay, and then also uh, there's all kinds of stuff. I could click right here to put web content in, so I could paste uh, a YouTube link in here or some pictures. Uh, there's actually a Google search within the program, so I could search Google for an image. So if I want to add a coordinate plane, I can search it right within the website and just drop it right into there for whatever reason I have. So uh, this is a really fun way of organizing. Um, I've had a couple students tell me that this is really useful. And that sounds, that's it. That sounds great. All right, so any questions for Jason? <coughs> Dave, ask about your police box. <laughs> Can anyone connect to Google Drive to desktop, or do you need a DLC? OK, so on the school computers, the DLCs need to do it. But uh, talking to Martha and Tim Pappendorf, it sounds like they're going to roll out that app to everybody. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure when that's going to happen. Should already be happening right now. Should be happening. Oh, is Tim there? Hi, Tim. Yep. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Jason and Ashley and Greg and um, everybody who attended the meeting today. I'm going to stop recording here pretty soon, and I'll send you the link to the archive. Please remember to fill out the reflection form as well. And thanks, and don't forget to sign up for next week's.